Hello there, welcome back and welcome to part 89 in my build vlog series of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am doing all of the flags on the model and in reality I'm actually only adding one right at the aft. Um, the second half of this video is going to be taken up with a little bit of words just on the other flags that you could conceivably add to your model Titanic, depending on when or where you are modelling her throughout her life. So um, it'll be a fairly quick video today by my standards, but hopefully it'll have some interesting content. So without any further ado, let's crack on. Right, I'm just going to show you what I do with my uh, flags. Uh, so what we've got here, just sort of soaking, uh, is a transfer of the Blue Ensign. Now, Titanic was allowed to fly the Blue Ensign because her commander, Captain Smith, was a Royal Naval Reserve. Had he not been a Royal Naval Reserve, Titanic would have had to fly the Red Ensign instead, but in this case she flew the Blue. So, this is one of the few flags that I'm going to have on my model. Um, and I always think flags look a little bit better when they're sort of rippling in the breeze. And this is a technique for sort of getting a bit of ripple. Now, I should say from the outset that uh, this isn't really my idea. It's actually an idea I got from the model bench, uh, who's uh, another YouTube channel uh, making a model of the Titanic as well. A very good model of the Titanic as well. So um, it's not my idea, but, you know, this is a build log, so I'll still show it. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich some foil in between the flag um, and this will give it a bit of rigidity and it'll allow us to sort of bend it and make it look like it's rippling in the breeze. Uh, so let's see if this is ready. Yep, looks like it. Lovely job, right. Okay, so what I'll do to start with is I'll just Make, a, make the foil a, bit, a little bit smaller so it's a bit easier to work with. Then what we'll do... I'll attempt to slip the foil. Under the flag. Okay, we've got it in one. And then fold the other piece over onto to the side. Make sure we've got a nice sharp bend. And then what I'll do is I'll just let this dry for a little bit. And then we'll go along and we'll trim away the, uh, the foil. So there we go. Now the first thing that I've done is I've actually sprayed this with a matte varnish because transfers always have a, a habit of being quite um, shiny. Whereas flags, you know, they're always going to be material based. So you don't want them to be too sort of bright and shiny really. So I'm just now going along and cutting out the transfer with the foil backing. Now you can see, probably because of the varnish, that it's actually rippled in places, but if I'm honest, I do not care in the slightest, because it's a flag, it will ripple. <laughs> you know, it's a thin material flag that's kept stretched out by the wind so it didn't really matter to me that that's happened at all. Now all I'm going to do is just to give it a bit of sort of life, make it look like it's rippling in the wind, is I'm just going to use this screwdriver just to sort of give it some some motion. Dropped it, just being clever. Okay. 
and there we go. There you've got a nice flag with a bit of life in it, which will look good on the model. Now here we go with the White Star house flag. Uh, this was flown on the main mast or the after mast, um, right at the very top, and of course that will throw up some problems which we will address in just a second but for now I am doing exactly the same principle as I did with the Blue Ensign I am just getting the transfer off its paper and getting it attached to some foil to give it a bit of rigidity um, now with this flag uh, I'm not going to do any curling on it because um, I think because this was so high up the main mast I think there would have been a fair amount of wind um, so I think it seems a bit more logical that this flag will be almost entirely unfurled, unlike the flag right at the aft of the Titanic, which probably won't have seen as much wind, because, you know, it'll have been sheltered by the actual ship itself. Now these flags are lovely, but they are a little bit glossy, so what I've tended to do is just spray them with a matte varnish, just to take that sheen off them. And of course there it is on the mast, as you can see. But you might be thinking, Hmm, how are we going to remove this? Because, of course, we need to be able to remove the Marconi array. How do we remove the flag in order to do so? Well, it's very simple. All I've done is I've fitted the flag with a brass tube through the middle of it. So you can quite simply plonk it down onto the mast. And this also has the slightly nice unintended feature that uh, the flag will move slightly in the wind as it moves around the mast. So there we go. And now we see both sections of the ship with their two flags respectively flying. Right, that's it. That's all the modelling I'm going to do today because those are the only flags uh, I think would have been flying from Titanic. Remember, my Titanic is set sort of afternoon in mid-Atlantic, probably talking like the 12th, 13th of April 1912. Uh, and I just don't think any of the flags have been flying. Um, but I do think it's worthwhile just going into a little bit of, inf a little bit of depth on uh, the other flags that could have been flown from Titanic. Starting with, um, and this is not an exhaustive list by the way, because there are hundreds of flags that could legitimately have been flown from Titanic. But I'm talking here about flags that you could realistically, in the service life that Titanic had, flags that you could realistically mo want to model. So starting at the very front, you could have had the pilot jack. We'll go into a bit of information on that. Uh, then we have the sort of courtesy flag or destination flag, not really the right name, but the flag on the foremast, let's say for now. Um, then, of course, we've got the White Star House flag. We've got the Ensign, uh, and then there's a number of other flags that legitimately could have been flown from different heights on the aftermast. So let's go into a little bit of information on those now. Now, just before we kick off into this, uh, most of the following information, in fact, to be honest, pretty much all of the following information, is derived from a really nice article um, called Flags of RMS Olympic and RMS Titanic by Art Brunschweger. Um, and this is uh, an article that was written um, for the Titanic Research and Modelling Association. Uh, I'll pop a link in the description um, in, in this video, but uh, you can find it on the internet and it's really good, it's very comprehensive and it gives you lots of background information on all of the different flags that could have been flown. Right, first off, ensigns. Now, uh, ensigns are flags typically flown from the stern or aft ends of vessels, uh, and their intention is to show the nationality of the ship in question. Um, under certain situations, these might also be flown from other parts of the ship. For example, if Titanic was in British waters and if she was dressed, so to speak, uh, the ensign would have also been flown from the top of her foremast. Um, but for normal practices, it would have been flown from the stern. Now, the other job of an ensign, other than denoting the nationality, is to denote the function of the ship, and therefore there are different types of ensigns. There's the white ensign, or naval ensign, which denotes a warship, um, but there's also the merchant ensign, um, which would typically be red. And by default, Titanic would have flown the red ensign, because she was a merchant ship. Uh, so that makes 
perfect sense. However, for a number of reasons, Titanic was entitled to fly the blue ensign. Uh, now, this was a bit of a nod, really, to um, to people on board the ship. Uh, the blue ensign could only be flown uh, upon the issue of an Admiralty warrant, uh, and this showed, this denoted, that the captain and at least ten ratings or officers on board were members of the Royal Naval Reserves. So Titanic was entitled to fly the Blue Ensign because of her crew. Um, if she didn't meet the requirements, she would fly the Red Ensign like any other merchant ship. And this flag would have been flown during daylight hours. Right, other ensigns. So, um, as I've already shown, um, with the use of things like the blue ensign, many different flags could be flown from the tallest point of the forward mast. Uh, but for this section of the video, I only really want to talk about other ensigns that could be flown. Now, this flag is sometimes referred to as a destination flag, and whilst that's, in some cases, that is the case, um, for example, before Titanic left Southampton, when she was just berthed there, for the majority of the time she did fly the US flag. Um, however, the flag that really takes precedence in this location is what's known as a courtesy flag. Um, and this, is, this, this flag would be the ensign of whatever country you are entering or you are in what national waters of at the time. So, for example, uh, when Titanic was in Cherbourg, when she entered and when for the entirety of her duration at the port, she would have flown the French ensign or the tricolour. Um, however, when she left Southampton, she was flying the American ensign. Now, just a couple of notes on this. Um, the tricolour, pretty, um, pretty straightforward. That flag hasn't changed for a very long time. Just... Um, uh, just one thing to mention about the US flag, if you intend to have that flying from your model, though. So at the time of Titanic sailing, um, on the 10th of April 1912, there were 48 states in America. Uh, New Mexico had joined uh, in January the 6th, and Arizona had joined on the 14th of February 1912. Uh, and that brought the total up from 46 up to 48. However, at the time, the US flag had not been updated. And in fact, the US flag wasn't updated uh, until July the 4th of 1912. So at the time of Titanic sailing, the US flag would only have had 46 stars on it. So this is a very, very small detail, uh, and I completely understand if you don't give a toss. Uh, but um, the actual, the, the US flag should have 46 stars on it. Uh, and just as a note, the, the two US flags that you get as part of the Trumpeter kit uh, do not have the correct number of stars on. One has 47 stars and the other has 48, neither of which are correct. So uh, that's just a sort of a, a heads up in case you are sort of interested in that level of detail. The White Star House flag. Uh, this was flown from the top of the aftermast or the mainmast from 8 a.m. until sunset every day. Uh, of course, we don't see this flag very much anymore because White Star doesn't really exist anymore. It was amalgamated into Cunard to become Cunard White Star in the 30s, and then the name White Star was dropped altogether later uh, just to become Cunard once again. However, incidentally, uh, the White Star house flag is still raised uh, on April the 15th uh, on all Cunard ships uh, in memory of Titanic every year. So you can very occasionally still see this flag flying. Okay, mail flags. Uh, these would have been flown about halfway up the mainmast or the aftermast, uh, and these denoted the ship's status as a carrier of mail. So, as we know, Titanic was called RMS Titanic, or Royal Mail Steamer. So these flags would have been flown to indicate that Titanic was carrying mail that needed to be offloaded. So, when she left Southampton and when she arrived in Cherbourg, Queenstown and New York, she would have raised the Royal Mail Pennant. And this would symbolise 
that there was mail aboard her that needed to be unloaded as soon as possible. Had she survived, and had she ever attempted an eastbound crossing, she may well have flown the US mail flag uh, when leaving New York and arriving in Plymouth, Cherbourg or Southampton. Of course, that never happened. Now, as I say, there are a lot of flags that you legitimately could fly from your model, and I'll, I won't go into all of them because there's a lot, but here's a few others. Um, this is the pilot jack, uh, and this would be used to dress the bow of a ship. Um, this, on the top of the forward mast of this ship, is the blue peter, uh, and this flag was, uh, was held aloft to say, essentially, I am about to sail. Um, International code flags would have been used, and these could be used in various different orders suspended from the forward mast uh, to communicate various different messages at short range. And then lastly, the pilot flag, shown here sailing at the back, um, white with a red stripe below. Uh, and this would have shown that a licensed pilot was on board and in control of the ship. Now, the final question is, were any of these flags actually flown at sea? Because, of course, it's one thing to fly these flags when someone's going to benefit from them, i.e. when you're in sight of land or in sight of other ships, but it's another thing to fly them when there was no one really about to benefit from them. Um, and this is a bit of an open question, really. Um, one of the best places to take photographs of ships was on the Isle of Wight, because ships would sail out of Southampton Water, and make a wide turn, and then shoot off into the English Channel, usually heading over to Cherbourg to start their journey. Uh, and there's a lot of photos of Olympic which show, as she's coming out of Southampton Water, she's already in the process of lowering her masthead flags. So the American ensign and the White Star House flag are already in the process of being lowered when she's leaving Southampton Water. Uh, so this seems to suggest that um, masthead flags were not flown in open sea. Uh, now, uh, as with a lot of these things, this doesn't seem to be a particularly consistent process because there are some photos showing Olympic still flying the American ensign, still flying her house flag, uh, as she passes through Spithead out into the English Channel. Um, so it looks like some captains were perhaps content to leave these flags flying across the English Channel, lower the American ensign, raise the French ensign or the tricolour when they arrive in Cherbourg. Uh, but what, what does seem to be fairly clear is that masthead flags were not flown in open sea. And this seems to be corroborated with photos of White Star ships. It also seems to be corroborated with photos of Cunard ships as well. There's quite a lot of photos of Olympic excuse me, of Mauritania and Lusitania, and these don't seem to show any flags either. So, for the, for the purposes of being accurate, I am not going to fly either masthead flag on my model of the Titanic. As to whether the Blue Ensign was still flown on the stern of Titanic throughout the Atlantic crossing, um, it's very hard to say for sure. Uh, the same photos that show Olympic with no masthead flags, do still show the ensign in place. So it is possible that she flew the ensign uh, for the entirety of her crossing. Um, but as with all these things, it's we're making guesses based on incomplete data. We're making guesses based on a handful of photographs. Um, there's no real sort of process or rule book that we can look at for this. Uh, but for the purposes of my model, I will fly the blue ensign at the back of Titanic. So there you go, that was a very long-winded way of saying that this is the only flag that's going to fly on my model. Don't need this one. So there you go, I hope that was useful. Um, and as always, I would suggest that you take this video with a pinch of salt. Ultimately, it's your model. You do whatever you want to do with it. If you want to fly the White Star pennant, you want to fly the, the US ensign, the French ensign, do whatever you want, you know, it's your model. Um, I've made my guesses based on that really good article, which I will link down below. So sincerely, thank you again for that article. It's really, really, really helpful, and it's made a very complicated subject very easy. So there you go. 
That is the only flag that will be flown from my Titanic. So, I'll leave the video there. If you've got any questions or comments, do please pop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.